and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope you're well today. Hope you're feeling grand annals around your world. It's a very grey, rainy day outside, but it's an extremely awesome day in here, and I'm a bit hyperactive because I finally have a pedal board that I've wanted for ever. 2004. Yes, it would have been 2004. I've wanted this, this setup since 2004. There you go. So, I finally got it. It's a recreation of John Fushanti's 19, uh, Californication touring pedal board. So, what's that? Let me show you. So, here it is, people of the tube. I say, I have wanted this setup for so long, it's not even silly. And in all fairness, there's just many times when I could have done it and just didn't. And I don't know why. I mean, I did do a video, I think it was last year, where I kind of amalgamated it, but it was missing the Phase 90. Uh, but anyway, it's... And also, I needed the DS2 elsewhere, I needed the the, the Rage 10 elsewhere, and at the point, um, I uh, needed this elsewhere as well. But now I don't, so this board can stay how it is, and that makes me very happy in the fact that I can just leave this set up for all time. And it will stay set up for all time, because this is a this is like a dream, this bit. Because I, I, it just, it just, I mean, I, I know that sounds a bit silly to say, but... That Californication period of the Chili Peppers is my favourite period of John's guitar playing and John's guitar tone. And I've always wanted his pedal board from at that time. So, uh, yeah. So I'm happy. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. So what is it, people tube? So let's start here. So we have a Past Effects uh, Chorus Ensemble here. This is obviously does the C1 perfectiness, gorgeousness, awesomeness of joy and chorus heaven. So that's there. Ibanez WH10 Wah, this is the V2. Uh, phase 90, I've never owned a Phase 90, and this board was my excuse to get one, finally. I've always wanted a Phase 90, but I've, I've just never, I've never kind of bothered with one before. But now I have this board, jobs are good. And I will do a review of this outside of this board as well, people. I will do a review of this separately at some point. But at this point in time, there it is. And it's the, uh, it's not the script logo MXR, uh, Phase 90, it's the kind of, uh, I don't know what you call that, block logo, Phase 90, it's got the indicator light, and, uh, it sounds amazing. And I always have it turned all the way down. I'll, I'll talk about settings in a minute, I've got the pedal set up. Then we've got the FZ3, which is the fuzz pedal John used at that time, and then we have the glorious Boss DS2. Uh, this is a new DS2, sounds amazing though, you know, sounds absolutely mega. And um, the signal chain is fairly straightforward. It comes from the guitar, into the DS2, into the fuzz, into the MXR phase, into the Ibanez wah, into the chorus, and then splits out to the amp. Uh, John ran his in stereo, so uh, you'd have uh, you got two outputs on the uh, on the chorus here. One would go to his Jubilee, and one would go to the major. I'm just running it in mono today, as I don't have an amp down here. Well, other than the one I'm running into that uh, I really kind of want to do the stereo thing with. I'm just going to run it mono today, just just for ease of use, really. But I, I might revisit it at some point where uh, we run it in stereo with two Marshalls, just to see. But today, people for tube, we're running into a Fender, the Fender stage, because I love it. Okay, so let's talk about how I got these pedals set up. Okay, so let's start, let's start with the DS2. Okay, so there's a slight difference with the DS2, which I'm sure some of you have noticed by now. That to how I normally have the DS2. So I have it on mode 2, so the turbo mode. I have distortion all the way up, I have tone all the way up, but I have level at 12 o'clock. Now this is something I discovered. I don't, I don't know if John had to do this with his board, and I haven't tried this through um, my orange or a Marshall yet. I've just been playing it down here. But um, if I turn the level up past 12 o'clock the distortion becomes really kind of like flubby and it, it doesn't sound very good it sounds a bit kind of like washed out and there's this really horrible kind of like rumbling noise that accompanies it and it's not very nice if i turn the level down to 12 o'clock here it's immediately it's there that's the californication well it, it's as close as i can get to the californication john fashanti ds2 tone if i turn it down and it also lowers the gain a little bit not enough to kind of like uh, cut any kind of sustain from a pedal but it just kind of lowers it just enough so when you combine it with this thing, and it, we'll get to in a sec, it just gives it that weird kind of violin-y tone that John had in 1999. So that's how I've got the DS2 cell. But like I say, 
that's uh, something I've I've never really done for DS2. I've always had the thing flat out. But I say for this setup, that really worked. So I've turned the volume down on the DS2 to half. Okay, so that's how I got DS2 set up. FZ3, same deal. If I ran the volume all the way out uh, on 10, it went weird. And it would do this thing where it would do that sputtery Jack White thing where when you stop playing, it would almost like noise gate itself. And it, it, I don't like that. So turning the volume down to 12 o'clock again on this pedal worked a treat. It just it was perfect. And all of a sudden, these two loved each other and spoke to each other in, a, in the way that John's did. Back in uh, back in the late nineties, early two thousands, like what Californication tour. So other than that, so I've I volume at twelve o'clock. I have tone at twelve o'clock, and I have fuzz all the way up. And I say when you combine these two, you'll hear in a minute. It just gives you it, it, it to me. It sounds ridiculously close. It really does sound close to me. Um, okay, so moving along, phase ninety, very simple. It's only one dial, and I've got it turned all the way down, so it's at its slowest rate. So it's basically Van Halen mode. And uh, it it does it, that just that just works. My only qualm with this phase ninety is when you turn it on, the sweep is at the high peak, so it's really bright, and then it kind of comes down, and you can kind of hear it. But I'll, I'll show you that when I turn it on. It's not really a big issue, and to be honest with you, when you're playing, you don't notice it. But um, there is a like there is a thing every now and again where you kind of turn it on and it's quite bright. It makes it adds like a, a brightness to your tone because the uh, the phase is kind of like it starts at, it starts really high and then comes down really low and then kind of goes back up. So that's that's I don't know if they all do that. This one does. But either way, I'm not I'm not complaining. It's just something weird. Okay, so moving on to WH10, uh, another deal. I've had to turn the depth dial down on the on the WH10 because the way I'm running it. Uh, just because I'm using the amp basically for the uh, the dirty clean tone, uh, the dial on the side it's just too powerful, so I have to turn it down to about half. So everything seems to be kind of everything seems to work really well when you turn it down to like twelve o'clock. But so I've turned the depth dial down to twelve, basically. Well, give or take, it's about well just past twelve on at this point in time. But again, you can mess around with that. But that's how I've got the Ibanez uh, WS10. Uh, chorus wise, uh, I'm not using the vibrato channel, it's just sell to nothing. I do apologize about the uh, lens cap there. Uh, chorus wise, I've got the chorus dial at 12 o'clock again. 12 o'clock seems to be the magic number for this pedal world. So, chorus is at 12 o'clock, and the level is at 12 o'clock, and I'm in the high mode. And as far as I can tell, that's how John ran his CE1 was in the high mode with the uh, dial about 12 o'clock. I'm pretty sure. He would mess with this. Uh, if you watch some of those gigs back then, there are certain times where it's more distorted and it's more clean. I'm pretty sure he's playing around with this, but I don't know. Because, I say, at this point in time, John didn't have the MXR micro amp to add gain. Uh, he didn't have any of that kind of thing. It was just these five pedals, and that's it. You know, it was, it was, that, that was all it was. So, obviously, the RC10 wasn't there at the time. Bass was there for the intro jam. I'm going to unplug that from a Fender in a minute uh, when we when I do the uh, just the sound examples, just so I'm not tempted to play with it. But uh, I wanted I wanted something kind of like you know looper wise for for the intro jam. But that's it. So everything seems to work really well at twelve o'clock. Like I say having the volumes cranked just didn't seem to want to happen. It didn't want to seem to work at all. But turning things down just made everything happy and homogenous and happy happy days. Okay. So and I say this this thing just. It just kind of like wrangles stuff uh, a bit, uh, especially when you combine it with the Fender. I'll get to the Fender in a sec. Okay, so um, so yeah, and again, so like I say, we're coming out of here. It's just a uh, mono today. We're not going in stereo. But that's it. That's how I've got the pedals set up. Uh, we're going to use the black strap today. And uh, so yeah, let's go. Let's go over to the Fender amp. Let me show you what I'm how I'm running a Fender amp. So hopefully you'll be able to see this. I hope the window glare isn't too bad. Uh, I'll tell you anyway. So we're using the drive channel of the Fender to simulate um, basically John's broken up Jubilee and Plexi. The Plexi would sound cleaner than the Jubilee, but around that time, to me, it sounds like John's recorded sound seems more like the Jubilee than the Plexi. It kind of seems like Jubilee, like, I would say Jubilee's like 60%, and then the, the, the Major's like 40%. That does change, obviously, later on with by the way era, where it sounds like it's more the major, where it's more cleaner. It's not really clean, but cleanish, should we say? Uh, anyway, 
I'm using the drive channel on the Fender stage here to kind of simulate it. And uh, I've got the drive at two. So drive is set at two. So not a great deal of gain, but just enough for this kind of like, it, it's just perfect basically for this, this kind of thing. Uh, I've got treble on zero, mid is all the way up on 10, and bass is all the way up on 10. Uh, I do have reverb on as well, but I'm going to put that down to four because um, John didn't have reverb, but he was playing places he didn't need reverb. Anyway, that's how I've got the amps up. And basically what the amp's doing is if you've seen any of my other videos where I get John's tone using pedals, the distortion channel, well, drive channel of the Fender here is basically taking place of the um, uh, jackhammer or golden plexi. That's what this is doing. Uh, so I don't need the golden plexi or the uh, jackhammer for this for this pedal board because the amp is basically doing that, and the amp is basically the the main thing that's controlling the volume jumps of the DS2 and the Ibanez uh, the Ibanez Wah basically with a little bit of help from the C uh, the C1. So, but it's mainly coming from the amp, the compression from this distortion channel. If I run it run the pedal board into the clean channel, all hell breaks loose and volumes go everywhere. But because I'm running it into an already uh, kind of compressed channel that's kind of broken up, um, everything is happy and works and joyful and triumphant, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But, um, but so yeah, that's that's why there is no. And again, John didn't John didn't use. Uh, I wanted an exact, well, near enough exact replica of his pedal board, so I didn't want to put the golden plexi on there or the or the jackhammer or anything else like you know the black T for instance. I, I just wanted to kind of keep it those five pedals and just uh, use the amp for that kind of broken up sound. Uh, I will say that I think it sounds really close with this Fender with the stage, and I think the stage to be honest with you has a bit more of a kind of. This is my favourite Fender amp, and I have done the Steve Ray Vaughan trick. Inside here is a, uh, a thing of gaffer tape, which darkens it down and enhances the mid range and cuts off the highs. And it, I reckon it's oh, not the mic. I reckon it sounds really close. Like I say I will do another video in the future where we run it through two Marshalls in stereo. But for this point in time, I like this, and I've been playing that board through this amp since I got uh, since I made that board, and I've just got no desire to. I, I just like I, I like the way it sounds with this. And to me, it sounds really close. You know, it, it, it's not 100%, it's never going to be. But to me, it sounds really close. And I absolutely adore this amp. It's like, this is my favorite Fender amp, closely followed by that thing there. But uh, I absolutely love this amp. It really is, it's just a Swiss Army pen knife of Fenders. It really is, I love it to bits. Anyway, people tube, that's enough talking. Let's get to it. So, uh, just again, give you a signal chain. Uh, uh, going from a strap, we go into the DS2. Uh, fuzz, Phase 90, Ibanez Wah, CE1, and then to the Fender amp, into the drive channel um, to simulate that kind of like broken up, kind of cranked up Marshall tone. Okay, so anyway, um, oh yeah, we're not close mic'd as well, people tube, as usual. We've got, we got a fair bit, fair distance um, on the mic to the grill cloth. Okay, so, uh, and also not very loud. I've only got the volume on three, which is uh, just about. You can just about talk over it, so I don't want to because I don't want to blow my ears out. Anyway, so uh, yeah, enough talking. Let me show you what this sounds like. I'm going to disconnect while we're here. Actually, I'm going to disconnect the um, uh, the uh, RC10. So we've got nothing in the effects loop now. It's just the pedal board going into the front end of the amp, and let's go.
Oh, you don't compete with you. There you go. That's all the pedals. Like, uh, some, you know, uh, I, hopefully you can kind of see what I'm turning off and turning on. Do, you know, does it sound 100% like John sound? No, it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. It's not going to. But does it sound close? To me, it really does. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, people with you. To me, it sounds really, really close to that 1999 John tone. It, and it's a swing. I mean, it, it, oh, it, yeah. Words fair. I just love it. I love this board so much. And I'm so happy I finally got, like, it, you know, as close as I can get to it. And it, it, again, it hasn't disappointed. It sounds right to me. And I've been, for the last, like, couple of, well, months. <laughs> I've well not 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 months but month. I've been playing along with this board to all the gigs from 1999, so like Bizarre Fest, like the gig in Toronto, Red Square, stuff like that. I've been playing along with this board, and I just I just I get lost in it, and it's so cool. And I had to pull myself out just then because otherwise I'd keep playing and playing and playing and playing, and that it would just go on for days and days and days. So I've got to be careful, but um. I think it's really close. Like I said, I mean, it, I, I don't, I wouldn't like to put a, like an idea of how close that is, but to me, it feels really close, and it's set in the room and through what I can hear, it sounds really close. Hopefully, it'll come across okay on on the tube. Um, it might sound a little bit more compressed than it does in here, uh, but my God, these two together, the fuzz and the DS two together, it's just like heaven, especially on that net pickup. It gives you that weird kind of nasally tone that John had around that time when he used these two and, and say so adding the phase 90 putting the chorus on having these two on having the phase 90 on and then having the Ivan Ezoir on it's the most gorgeous cacophony of noise I have ever heard and I'm just I just oh yes 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 thank you I love this I really love it and I love the fact that I don't have to take any of these pedals off this board that's another thing I really I'm really happy like I say when I did this pedal board in the past, I did it like a year ago or something like that. Um, I needed the DS2 elsewhere. I needed the Ibanez wire elsewhere. I needed the and the chorus ensemble elsewhere. Now I've got them all kind of like separate. I don't have to take this board down. I will not take this board down if I can help it because I just like having it. I, and it's one of those boards that I've always wanted. Like I say, I mean, being a massive John nut, this is my favourite John board. Not the big huge stadium arcadian board not the you know not the big slain castle board or the by the way era this is my favorite john board because it's simple it's the point it's stripped back and it's just heaven and it sounds glorious i absolutely adore the sound of this thing i really do i love it and like i said i don't have to take this down which makes me so happy so this can stay so so happy anyway a little bit too excited that's all good though why not not wrong with being too excited um but yeah it's it's wicked it really is like i say everything just works about y2 as well like i say just turning the volumes down and everything as well just kind of really helped the sound um like i say when when the volumes are all flat out it just sounded a bit weird so just cranking them back a bit really worked and that's something i've never done with uh with these with these pedals so to do it it's kind of cool and and to know that that's the way it has to be for this cell whether john did that to his cell or not who knows? But um, I've had to do it with mine. And I just love it. It's so cool. And like I say, I love the sound of it through that Fender stage. I mean, I think it would sound closer if I did run it into a Marshall MG. Uh, if, if I write, Or my Katana if, uh, or the Orange. Um, but I really like the sound of it through the Fender. I really do. I really like the way it sounds through the Fender. It's, I would say it's a little bit brighter than a Marshall. I would say the Marshalls and the Orange and the, the Katanas a little bit darker. And at one point, people would assume, I will run this thing through a Marshall. We'll run it through my two Marshall MGs in stereo. How about that? And we'll see where we go. And I'll set one up kind of to be like a major and one set up to be like more like the Jubilee and we'll, we'll do that. But uh, at this point in time, I just wanted to show you it because I'm impatient. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this vid, people with tube. I hope you enjoyed the noises this thing makes. I say... I'm so happy to have this. I'm actually spitting everywhere because I'm dribbling everywhere. Gross. Uh, I'm just so happy to have like a recreation of this board because, like I say, this is just always this is this is my favourite era of John right here. These five pedals. That's it. You know. That's that's it.
So I'm very happy. I bet you can't tell. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. I'll see you again very soon for another one. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. And yeah, goodbye now. I'm off to play a bit more. So cheers. Thank you very much. Goodbye now.